Although Krita used to be mostly a digital painting program, over time it evolved a lot and now its feature set is so large that it supports photo editing better than before. In this picture, I had a sky that was a little bit too weak. I really wanted to bump it up. We're going to see how to use non-destructive filters to only target the sky like so, to use the lightness of the image to make pixels transparent. This is a technique that's very common in matte painting, but also in texturing for 3D, and that you can use while painting to save a lot of time. If I desaturate my picture, you can see that overall the sky is lighter than the foreground, and this is common in photography. You can use that to your advantage to separate the foreground and the background using filters. So first, we're going to duplicate our sky or our full image and group it so that our modifications all land inside of it. And we're going to apply a filter to that picture. So we can do this in two ways. We can go to the filters menu, go to adjust and use cross channel adjustment curves. When you do so, you have a button to create a filter mask and this filter will become attached to your layer. Instead though, I want to create an adjustment layer and for that we're going to go to the arrow next to the add layer button and go to a filter layer. This is the equivalent of adjustment layers in other programs. Instead that in Krita, it's more powerful than that. We're going to adjust cross channel color adjustment. This one lets you select a channel of the current layer or of the image that you want to modify and lets you pick a driver to modify it, to strengthen whatever channel you picked. So you can modify the saturation of the image, but you can also modify its alpha or its lightness. These are probably the three most interesting options in this filter. We're going to pick alpha for the channel, the transparency of the image. For the driver channel, you want to use the image's lightness. And then if you lower the point to the left, you will see the darker parts of the image fade away. We're going to add a point around the middle and bump it up to this middle point on the Y axis, just to make sure that all the parts of the image, all the pixels that are lighter than mid-gray, so that's what you can see on the x-axis, are going to be fully opaque. And from there, we're going to pull the point on the left to the right so that we take away more and more of the image. And with this filter, I recommend to put the point to the right to the very top of the image because the higher portion of the range here, when you are working on the alpha, doesn't give you much. It's actually going to stay opaque the entire time, like on the higher half of the vertical axis. So what we're interested in is that straight line between the first point on the left and the second point in the middle. And you can use that to soften the transition by moving the point on the x-axis, on the horizontal axis. You can see how when I do that, parts of the path and of the corners of the sky are starting to fade. The farther apart the two points are, like the, uh, st rather, the steeper the line here, the sharper the transition, and the farther apart the points become, the softer the transition you will get. Now we want a pretty sharp transition and we want to get as much of the sky as we can. You can click OK and note that as this is a layer, you can right click at any time, go to properties and modify the transition and the filter. None of the changes are lost. You can also press F3 to open the layers properties and add the filter that way. You can use that layer here. You can paint with black on it to negate the effect from the filter. Let me show you an example. I'm going to press F3. I'm going to soften the transition just to remove a little more of the path at the bottom. But when I do so in the corners of the sky, because it's a little darker than the rest of the sky, I start to lose information and here in the middle of the sky. So I can paint 
with black and you will see that I'm removing the effect of the filter in that area. So similarly, because I can see it's really only on the top of the sky that I get this effect, I can press G to go to the gradient tool, make sure that the currently selected gradient is from black to transparent, and I will click and drag to create a black gradient that will remove this effect at the top of the image. So I've masked out some of the filter on my image. Now though, we do want to mask out the bottom of the image. We want to remove the path and all before we apply our color grade. So for that, I'm gonna go to the add layer menu and add a transparency mask to the group. So for that, you have to select the group first and do the operation at this point. In this transparency mask, I'm going to use my gradient and to click and drag to remove the path. And although there are a few extra pixels you want to remove and you could try to target them with a filter again based on the image's colors this time instead of using the lightness, I recommend to use a soft brush instead and to paint in black in these areas. So I'm just going to remove a little bit of the remaining pixels and there we go. We have non-destructively remove the foreground for the, from the image. If I unhide the layers, you can see in two steps, we could effectively target the sky. Now it's time to do our color grade. I'm going to unhide the base of the image so I can see my full value and color composition. Now select the group again, and we're going to add a gradient map. Add a new filter layer and go to the map category and gradient map. The selected portion of the image will change colors based on that gradient. From dark to light, the pixels of the image will be remapped to that gradient. The dark pixel will stay dark and the bright pixels will become transparent with this gradient. We want to use the black and white gradient as a base. The default built-in gradients in Krita are not too, too great. And you can see how our mask works right now. You can see that first there's a little bit of blue from the sky that is not part of our mask, but it's no problem. It's not going to cause any issue on the image. And we are turning the sky grayscale in this case. Now let's edit our gradient. So I'm going to keep the black and white color stops. And I want to add stops in the middle of the gradient. For that, you click at any point. And when the stop is selected, you can edit its color by clicking on the color swatch. So in the dark portions of my image, I'm going to start with a dark blue. And you want to try and match the relative lightness that this color is supposed to represent because we only want to remap the colors of our sky to make them a little more saturated if you want. I'm going to use a slightly purple blue in this case. You can already see the effects updates under your eyes. I'm going to add a much lighter blue in the middle of my gradient. Something pretty bright. Again, pulling it a little bit towards the purples. Press OK to see the effect update. And there was an area in my original image as this was taken during sunset. I want to like have some orange in here. I want to bump that peach color. I'll press F3 to edit the gradient again. I'm going to extend the window here. And around here, um, this is the relative lightness of that part. I'm going to add a new stop and pick some yellow, like golden orange, really bright, and move the stop to really target that part of the image. So I want it to be a little more pink here and slightly darker. I'm going to pull it towards the red. And there we go. I've got a base color I can work with. I just want to change the brightness of that blue and make it maybe a little more towards the teal. There we go. So the colors are a little bit muddy, right? This depends on the gradient you manage to create, but 
it's a little hard to create a really beautiful gradient that you can apply in the copy mode, the default mode for these filter layers. But you can use other blending modes instead. For example, we can go down to overlay and then it completely changes the effect. Now it's going to slightly tint the colors, but it's also going to add value contrast and saturation at the same time. And at that point, you can play with the opacity slider to mitigate the effect a little bit. And as we get to the final result, we can hide and unhide our sky, our modified sky, to see that, yeah, we've really bumped the saturation and color contrast on the sky. So that's one way you can do it. Let me show you that you can use any other filter really at this point. If you just wanted to boost the saturation on the sky, you could go to adjust and go to HSL HSV adjustment, bump the saturation, and there you go. You've got a much more saturated image. Now, the problem with doing the saturation thing alone is that it tends to boost everything uniformly and you don't get that color contrast with added with the gradient map filter that really makes that sunset pop. Also, as you have masked the sky in front, you can apply a filter at the bottom using a filter layer, and this will only affect the foreground effectively. So if I want to boost the saturation at the bottom, I can also do so, and this will happen separately from the sky. Thank you kindly for watching this tutorial. If you want to support the channel, you can get one of our courses that you can give to someone or that you can get for yourself. Especially if you want to learn game development, we have a great course on Godot. But we also have some older videos on Krita that are still relevant in Krita 4. This technique, as I said, is also useful when doing texturing for 3D, for example. Would you be interested in a tutorial showing that? For example, how to add moss or grass to crevices? Please tell us in the comments below. But that said, thank you kindly for watching, be creative, have fun, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.